Hello and welcome to the next lesson of this Windows Deployment Services training course from Tech Tips from Will. In this lesson, I will look at the minimum requirements for implementing Windows Deployment Services into your environment. I will also demonstrate how to install the Windows Deployment Services role on Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2 servers. By the end of this lesson, you will have all of the knowledge necessary for creating a Windows Deployment Services server. So let's get started. The first question we need to answer is what exactly do we need in order to implement Windows Deployment Services? In order for Windows Deployment Services to work correctly, there are certain services which must be available on the network. These are Active Directory, DNS and DHCP. It is worth noting at this point that the Windows Deployment Services server can be either a member server or a domain controller. Personally, I would install Windows Deployment Services onto its own dedicated server if possible. The operating systems you deploy from the WDS server are called images. These images must be stored on a partition which is formatted with the NTFS file system. Microsoft strongly recommends that images be saved on their own dedicated partition and not on the partition that contains your operating system. If possible, you should consider saving these images onto a separate hard disk altogether. The last requirement to mention is that the bare metal computers which will receive the images must contain network adapters which are PIXI compatible. PIXI, or Preboot Execution Environment, allows a network adapter to be assigned an IP address from a DHCP server when there is no operating system installed. Once assigned an IP address, the bare metal computer can communicate with the WDS server and download the image. Preboot Execution Environment was first created back in the late 1990s, so all modern computers and network adapters should support this. Now that we have discussed the requirements that make Windows Deployment Services work, let's take a look at how you install it. What you are looking at is a Windows Server 2012 R2 server. If you are still using Windows Server 2012, the installation process is practically the same, so you should be able to follow along. Before I show you how to install the Windows Deployment Services role, I would first like to point out a couple of things. If I right-click on the Start button and select System from the list of options, you will see that the name of this server is WDS1. You can also see that this server is joined to the techtipsfromwill.co.uk domain. I am showing you this to prove that this server is a member server of an Active Directory domain. If you recall from earlier, I mentioned that Active Directory is a requirement if you wish to use Windows Deployment Services in a domain environment. I would also strongly recommend that you install Windows Deployment Services onto a member server where possible. However, you can also install it on your domain controller if you wish. To install Windows Deployment Services, first open Server Manager from the lower left corner and select Manage from the top right corner. From the drop-down list, select Add Roles and Features. This will open the Add Roles and Features wizard. On the Before You Begin page, click the Next button. On the Select Installation Type page, select the Role-Based or Feature-Based Installation radio button, and then click the Next button. On the Select Destination Server page, at the top, select the Select a Server from the Server Pool radio button. At the bottom, I will select my wds1.techtipsfromwill.co.uk server and will click the Next button. On the Select Server Roles page, scroll down through the list and tick the tick box for Windows Deployment Services. Notice that in order to install Windows Deployment Services, I will also have to install some additional features. These are commonly referred to 
as dependencies. I will accept the dependencies by clicking the Add Features button and will then click the Next button. On the Select Server Features page, just click the Next button. The next page is the WDS page. This page gives you an overview of what Windows Deployment Services is and how it works. Notice that the page will remind you that Windows Deployment Services will require a DNS and DHCP server to be present on your network, and that the images you add to the WDS server must be stored on a partition formatted with the NTFS file system. When you are ready to proceed, click the Next button. The next page is the Select Role Services page. From here, you are asked to select which role services you would like to install. As you can see, there are two role services listed. These are Deployment Server and Transport Server. The Transport Server provides only a subset of the functionality of Windows Deployment Services, whereas the Deployment Server provides full functionality. One thing to note here is that the Deployment Server is dependent on the Transport Server. To keep things simple, I would recommend that you select both options and click the Next button. On the Confirm Installation Selections page, at the top, tick the Restart the Destination Server Automatically If Required checkbox, and then click the Yes button. On some occasions, it is necessary to restart the server after installing a role. By ticking this tick box, the server will reboot itself automatically after installing the role if it needs to, which personally, I like to do. When you are ready to install the role, click the Install button. Windows Deployment Services will now start to install. At the top of the page, you will notice a progress bar, which shows how far along the installation process is. It can take a couple of minutes for the role to install completely. Server Manager will prompt you once the installation is complete. If I open Server Manager again, you will notice on the left-hand side that WDS has been added to the list of roles installed on the server. As you can see, installing Windows Deployment Services using Server Manager is relatively straightforward, but you can also install the role using Windows PowerShell. To demonstrate how to do this, I will first remove the Windows Deployment Services role from this server and will reinstall it using Windows PowerShell. I have now removed Windows Deployment Services from my Windows Server 2012 R2 server. If I open Server Manager, notice that WDS has been removed from the list of roles on the left-hand side. I will now close Server Manager and will open Windows PowerShell. From here, I will enter the commandlet Install Windows Feature followed by the name switch and WDS. Next, I need to specify which server I want to install the role onto. To do this, add the switch Computer Name, followed by the name of the server, which in my case is WDS1. Next, I will add the Include All Subfeature switch. This will ensure that both the transport server and deployment server roles are installed. Next, I will add the Include Management Tools switch. When you install a role using Windows PowerShell, by default, it will not install the associated management tools for the role. If you do not include this switch, the role will be installed, but you will have very few tools to administrate it with. Finally, I will add the Restart switch. This will reboot the server automatically if required after the role has been installed. Windows PowerShell will start to install the role. At the top, you will notice a progress bar which shows how far along the installation process is. The installation should not take too long to complete, and Windows PowerShell will prompt once the process has completed. 
The installation should not take too long to complete, and Windows PowerShell will prompt you once it is finished. Notice that if Windows updates are not enabled on the server, Windows PowerShell will advise that you enable these, so that you can receive the latest updates to the role. If I close Windows PowerShell and reopen Server Manager, you will notice that WDS has reappeared on the list of roles on the left hand side. This concludes this lesson on how to install the Windows Deployment Services role. I hope that you have found this lesson useful, and watch out for our next lesson which will cover the initial configurations for Windows Deployment Services. If you'd like to see more Windows Server 2012 R2 training videos, please check out our YouTube channel. Many thanks, and we'll see you on the next lesson.